Marketing Director of Culture Change at Resource Fund, and I'm very excited to be with you all here today. Before we did get started in earnest, I wanted to acknowledge that we are all holding so much right now beyond this info session, whether it's thinking about the scourge of anti-Blackness that has damaged yet another life in Ralph Yarl, the violence faced by the people of Sudan in the last weeks, or the Palestinians recovering from attacks on them in their places of worship. We're all holding the entire Ummah and all our intersectional identities close and making da that Allah offers all those suffering the peace and tranquility that justice demands. And with that, um, we're really grateful for all of you spending a bit of time with us today and are looking forward to chatting more with you about our program, which we hope, among other initiatives, can help us reclaim some of that joy across all our communities. So I'm excited before I launch into our session to introduce two other folks joining us today. Um, so I'm going to pass it first to my teammate, Aya, to share more about herself and her role at Pillars. Hi, my name is Diane Nimmer. I'm the program manager of Culture Change here at Pillars Fund. I work a lot to support the fellowship and the programming um, that goes into the next uh, two years of getting this fellowship off the ground. Thanks, Aya. And uh, last but certainly not least, I want to pass it to Farida to share about herself and her connection to the fellowship. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Farida Zahnan. I am a writer director based in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm Egyptian, and I was in the first cohort um, of this lovely program. Um, and it's been lovely. It's been amazing. Uh, I, I guess we'll, we're going to talk about it. But um, yeah, no, I'm very grateful to be part of the Pillars family. But, Thanks, yeah. Sarita. We're yeah. super happy to have you part of the Pillars family as well. <laughs> and Farida is here really because at the end, when we open up to questions and answers, I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions for us as staff, but we also wanted an opportunity for you to ask questions to someone who's been through the program about the experience of the program. So that's why she's here. As you're brainstorming questions in the Q&A box, which you can see at the bottom of your screen, um, feel free to address questions to Farida as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Our emerging culture change strategy is a work stream that supplements and amplifies the work that we are already doing with the remarkable efforts of the Catalyze Fund, which is the other arm of pillars. That supports social entrepreneurs. We believe that changing the narrative of Muslims supports our Catalyze grantee partners to succeed in a more receptive society as they reimagine public safety, build civic power, and invest in mental health and wellness. We do that by amplifying Muslim voices that tell the truth, a truth that changes the lens through which our stories are told to one that is authentic, complex, accurate, honest, and ours. One of the ways we do this is by reinforcing pillars as a community-based grant maker. Because of the incredible work that Catalyze Fund has done over the last decade and continues to do now, we knew we had an opportunity to take that knowledge of grant making for and supporting social entrepreneurs to grant making for and supporting creative entrepreneurs. We're investing in emerging leaders in the storytelling space. And we're thrilled to continue our partnership with Riz Ahmed and Left Handed Films for the second iteration of Culture Change's signature program, the Pillars Artist Fellowship which supports Muslim artists to tell your own stories. We're honored to have the trust of Riz and his team to lead the scholarship program that provides Muslim artists with the funds, relationship building, professional development, and high support, high challenge community needed to reach their greatest creative aspirations. This fellowship is a crucial piece of our plan that allows the wider industry what we consider the privilege to uplift and amplify talent that has long existed in our communities but has generally been overlooked. This program seeks to become a trusted pathway for trained Muslim artists that we engage with and connect to opportunities long term. We hope we are building the bench of the next great Muslim storytellers who have the platform to tell the truth about our communities. Artists based in the US and UK that are selected as fellows each receive an award of 25,000 unrestricted dollars to support them in the next steps of their career. When we say unrestricted, we mean unrestricted. We never actually ask fellows how they use this money. If you wanna use it to 
finish your um, short film, that's totally acceptable. If you want to use it to buy camera equipment, that's totally acceptable. On the other hand, if you want to use it to quit your second job so you can focus on finishing your feature, that's also great. If you want to use it to pay your rent uh, while you are engaging in a more full-time creative practice, that's also great. Our selected artist fellows don't do this alone. Our artist fellows are championed and have the opportunity to learn directly from our prestigious advisory committee comprised of influential Muslim talent from across the film and television industry, including folks like Riz Ahmed, Mahershala Ali, Sana Amanat, and Hassan Minhaj. These trailblazers offer invaluable insight on how to navigate the industry with power and integrity. And what's exciting about this is this is the first time these influential storytellers have come together on one project to make clear that they're tired of being an exception to the rule. They're ready to work with us to change the rules entirely. Because of this unique opportunity, we wanted the program to be responsive and tailored to the needs of each of our fellows. We wanted it to be a boutique, highly individualized experience with space for building a community of creatives. So we surveyed our first class of fellows and we learned a lot about their individual needs and what they wanted out of the program. We identified three key trends that emerged across the cohort and we built the program around those trends. Fellows wanted to gain a community of support and have a safe space to have difficult conversations around Islam and the politics of representation. They wanted to have focused education on the industry, things like navigating legal, um, thinking about development deals, large sets and productions, et cetera. And they wanted to gain industry connections in production and development to help them get their projects off the ground. There are multiple ways to approach a program like the one we envisioned. At one end of the spectrum, there are programs like the Sundance Film Lab, on the other, there are programs like MacArthur or Emerson Style. Sundance is more of a lab that is designed around a specific project that you are delivering, while the MacArthur is more about just giving support to people who are doing great work. We landed at a place closer to a grant with individualized support. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First, our program is unique in that it is an interdisciplinary cohort. So people are all across different genres, everything from uh, you know, features that are narrative features to documentary, to horror, to et cetera. Folks that are both writers and screenwriters, or sorry, writers and directors, um, and also folks who are TV and film. So we really have a lot of people in the mix. And this allows for us to have a lot of flexibility and individualization to meet the needs of all our fellows. It also takes the pressure off the fellows to deliver a product for the sake of a marketplace and instead really puts the fellow and their development at the center of the experience while cultivating a cohort experience that leverages all of the community assets our organization has. There are two tracks of learning in the fellowship. There's first a collective cohort experience and also an individualized curriculum. The collective experience includes three in-person convenings over the course of the year, taking place in New York City, London, and Los Angeles that are all expenses paid. Between those three convenings, we also have very targeted and limited online programming with industry leaders to focus on areas like demystifying the development pro process or how to get an agent and Q&As with celebrated and notable artists. To add more color to what the two tracks look like, our fellow experience really uh, includes a tailored individual experience for each fellow, depending on where they're at in their career. We also help fellows start a goal and plan document that is created in consultation with left-handed films, Riz's company, and our consultants prior to the start of the fellowship that takes into uh, accountability your application, a questionnaire that you fill in after being accepted into the fellowship, and a development intake conversation. And it's also anchored by online mentorship, which is pretty unique in the landscape. This is the only program we know of that does this, where you receive three different types of mentors instead of one. So we have your creative mentor. This is somebody who is a person who 
is really honing in on the part of your craft that you're hoping to improve upon. So a couple examples of this would be that Kareem Khan, who is one of our incredible dramedy writers, uh, his creative mentor is Graham Yost, who created Justified. Uh, Nasheen Dadaboy, who really wanted to work on her cinematography, was matched with Bradford Young, who is the Oscar-nominated uh, cinematographer behind Arrival and When They See Us. We also have an industry mentor. The industry mentor is somebody who is a higher up development executive at a place like Netflix, Warner, A24, Amazon, Disney, et cetera. And those folks really support you in understanding the business of Hollywood. They help to sort of fill in holes that you might not see in your pitches. They help to advise you on what next steps you should take in order to get a project off the ground, et cetera. And the last is the advisor sponsor. So this is somebody like a Mahershala or a Nida Mansoor or a Sana Amanat or a Riz who has been where you are and is a near peer and someone who's a little more advanced in their career and can really help you understand how to navigate the industry with integrity. Um, what are the choices that they had to make and what might they do in your situation when you're facing something a little sticky? We divided the three cohort experiences that are in person based on fellow needs into three categories. All our learning either serves community building, industry knowledge, or creative skills. For creative, this is stuff like in-person workshops, opening the vault sessions, fireside chats, your creative and advisor mentors. For industry, this is your industry mentor, online seminars, fireside chats, and a showcase, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And for community, it's the cohort itself, in-person excursions that are really dynamic and get you to actually interact with the industry and the world around you um, and learning pods. Each in-person convening has differing goals and is tailored to the needs of each cohort. So that means that things will be different next year, depending on next year's cohort makeup and who's in it. But I wanted to walk you through last year's programming so you can get a sense of what it might look like. In New York, our president, Kashif Schiff, gave a welcome keynote at an orientation dinner the night before programming began. MNC fellow, our Muslim Narrative Change fellow, Hussein Rashid, grounded fellows in the legacy of storytelling in Muslim cultures and led them through a personal pop culture timeline. Fellows had a private tour of the Met's Islamic wing led by the museum's first Muslim curator of the wing. We had a chat unpacking trade secrets with two Muslim executives from Disney. We had a Q&A with the director of Judas and the Black Messiah, Shaka King. We took an excursion to see another Muslim narrative change fellow, Omar Fendam's premiere of his hip hop, Red Little Theria, at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. And we had an intimate departure conversation with Bassam Tariq, unpacking how artists can healthily approach community celebration and critique of their work. Fellow advisor Hassan Minhaj also joined us for a session on opening the Patriot Act vault which took fellows through the process of bringing Patriot Act from an idea to a Peabody award-winning series step-by-step. Step. And we're very thrilled to offer robust and rewarding programming like that in our cohort to our fellows. In London, we worked on creative application and place-based storytelling. Fellows took a tour of Brick Lane, the historic Muslim quarters of London, focused on documentary filmmaking with director Asif Kapadia, experienced a private dinner with celebrated and world-renowned chef Esma Khan, where she focused on the ways food can serve as a storytelling medium, had a private advanced screening of a film at Working Title, spoke to UK commissioners about how the business works in their industry, had an opening the vault session with Nida Mansoor about her film, Polite Society, which is out in theaters April 28th, so please go see it. It's a fantastic film. And we spoke to Malala Yousafzai about starting her own production company with Apple. And our LA convening, which we had just a couple weeks ago, allowed us to spend some time with Mindy Kaling, discussing perspectives on storytelling from an experienced showrunner, as well as time with Oscar-nominated documentarian Bing Liu about his process. And last but certainly not least, LA's convening also served as a showcase for our fellows to be introduced to key decision makers in the industry. This was an opportunity to get them in front of gate openers that can staff, hire, and represent them. As a result of the showcase, fellows have had a ton of interest and opportunity for their work. 
Now that you know what the fellowship is about, we're excited to share more about the application and selection process. The Pillars Artist Fellowship application process opens on May 1st, 2023, and we are accepting applications until May 31st, 2023 at 5 p.m. CST, Central Time, with no late submissions. So you might be wondering, what are the criteria for me to apply? What type of fellow are we looking for? First is just the eligibility. In order to be eligible to apply at all, we require the following. Applicants must be directors or screenwriters who identify as Muslim. You can also be a writer director, that's totally fine. Applicants must live in the US or UK, meaning you have a permanent address in either the US or UK at time of application. That being said, citizenship is not required and we welcome undocumented applicants. If you are an undocumented person, I do wanna note that this might mean that some programming is unfortunately restricted for you as we hold events in both the US and the UK and that travel can be really challenging, but we'll do everything we can to get you the legal support needed to get you that, that visa if possible. And last, applicants must be adults 18 years of age or older. Eligible screenwriters have compiled a portfolio with one primary and one secondary writing sample. The primary sample must be a completed pilot or feature length script and should reflect the work that you are most proud of. The secondary writing sample should be an additional completed pilot or feature length script showcasing your writing skills. Eligible directors will have compiled a portfolio with again, one primary and one secondary filmmaking work sample. The primary work sample must be either a short or feature showcasing your directing skills and should be the work you're most proud of. The secondary work sample can be a couple different things. It can be an additional short or feature or a music video, commercial, or if you're a writer director, could be a completed pilot script you have written or a completed feature that you have written. If you identify as a writer director, we ask that you apply as a director Use your primary filmmaking work sample as your directing sample and your secondary sample as your writing sample. Applicants also must be emerging artists. This is not a program for beginners or novice filmmakers. This is a program where, that, where we look at artists who are on the cusp of a shift in their careers, which means a couple things. Pillars defines emerging artists as a later career storyteller who meets between one to three of the following criteria. If you're somebody who is an emerging artist, you are likely to identify with one to three of these pieces. You have an agent or manager. You've directed a short or feature in the past five years. You've won a screenwriting award in the past five years. You've participated in another lab or fellowship in the past five years. You've staffed on a TV show or received a writing credit on a film. You've worked as an assistant in the entertainment industry for two or more years. And we identify entertainment industry pretty broadly. That's inclusive of fields like theater, music, stand-up comedy, et cetera. Now, I do want to say that the reason we share this is just to give you an idea of the level of person this is for, because it's not for beginners. But... If you do not meet one to three of these criteria and believe really strongly that you are fit for this fellowship and you have that portfolio and work samples and you think that you are able to compete, we still highly encourage you to apply. Your application will still be given full consideration. Now, what is the application comprised of and what do you need to do in order to apply? A couple things. One, we want a short bio telling us about who you are in 100 words or less. Second, we want you to upload a resume that tells us about your experience in film, television, writing, etc. The next piece is a personal statement video essay answering the following prompts in five minutes or less. The first is, what stories do you tell and why? Where do you want to advance in your career? And why is this the fellowship that's the right one for you to do that? What would success look like at the end of the program for you? And the last is to respond to the fellowship purpose statement. What about this statement resonates with you personally and your journey as a storyteller? The purpose statement is the Pillars Artist Fellowship empowers emerging Muslim artists 
with the resources needed to pursue their greatest aspirations. The fellowship centers unrestricted funding, professional development, wraparound mentorship that addresses industry, creative, and identity development, and community building to establish a growing bench of Muslim storytelling champions that are connected, have shared language, and feel supported to shift culture through powerful, proactive storytelling that advances justice for all. You'll also be asked for a short questionnaire. This questionnaire, again, allows us to get the best people in front of you when we start to program out what, what the in-person experience will look like next year. That will tell us your areas of interest. You can select more than one. If you're someone who's like, I do comedy, but I also do sci-fi. Great, check both boxes. Your mediums of interest, TV, film, documentary, other. Um, you can check as many as you are interested in. And some demographic questions that help us understand who you are. Eligible screenwriters, again, I wanna just double down on this. You'll have completed two writing samples and eligible directors will have completed two filmmaking samples. If you don't have two samples that fall under these categories, we encourage you to um, apply at a different time when you have those pieces in place. You might be wondering, what is Pillars looking for in my application? This feels really vague. We review applications for their fit in three evaluative areas. We look at divergence from harmful tropes, Muslim and otherwise, creative vision, and technical skill. We're particularly interested in films and scripts that tell joyful, honest stories from a Muslim point of view. It doesn't actually have to mean that your script is about Muslims, but if you're Muslim, you've got a Muslim point of view. We believe part of our liberation is diverging from tired terrorist narratives and centering the real daily lives of Muslims and other marginalized communities. We're looking for storytellers who have a clear artistic style, a clear point of view, and a strong sense of their craft. Our rubric also highly values work that is distinct, thought-provoking, and character-driven. You will submit your application through the submittable platform. That is a link that will come to you via website. If you're following us on Instagram or are signed up to our email uh, list, which you can do on our website, I highly recommend you do that. It's the fastest way to get information. That, we that website will be live on May 1st. We will share with applicants whether or not they have entered the long list next winter. The long list really is just a list of who we're taking into round two and beyond. For those that have been selected for the long list, again, you will hear whether or not you have been selected as a fellow in early 2024. So just to repeat that again, if you've been selected for the long list, you will hear in the winter. If you were not selected for the long list, we'll also tell you that in the winter. If you are selected for the long list, you'll hear whether you or not you have been selected as a fellow in early 2024. Pillars Culture Change Team is a two-person team processing thousands of applications. And due to the large number of applications we receive, we're not able to provide feedback on individual applications. We wish we could. We don't have the manpower for it. You can also visit the FAC on our website for more details. Um, the, if you go to our website, pillarsfund.org, hit culture change at the top. You'll see frequently asked questions and you can see all of the questions that um, we frequently get and hopefully your answer will be there. If your answer is still not there and we don't get to it today, at the very bottom of that page, there's a link that you can click that says submit another question. That goes directly to myself and Aya and we will answer your question within a business week. So if we don't get to your question today, which inshallah we will, um, we will definitely get to it if you submit via the fact. I'd love to end on this quote from one of our incredible Catalyze grantees, Dr. Camila Mutman Rashad. She really gets at what we're trying to achieve as an organization and why. She says, who we are doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. The racial, ethnic, and linguistic diversity only exists here. This is what is so compelling about this very unique crossroads of culture and faith. I wanna see Muslims step into that power, that connection, that richness, so we can stop apologizing. We are already enough. 
So at Pillars, we really have a philosophy that we're interested not in stories that say, please let me in. We're just like you. We're interested in stories that say, check me out. I'm different. And it, we're going to host a party so great for our people that you're going to want to come in and knock on the door and party with us. So that let us in versus check us out mentality is really something that we look for. And with that, I'm excited to welcome back Farida and Aya, who are going to help us with this Q&A piece. And you can go ahead and, and submit other questions, but super excited to hear your questions. Um, so I want to start because I've been talking for a long time. I want to start with a question for Farida from Kwan, and um, who says, Farida, did you attend all three convenings? What was your experience like? Hello, Kwan. It's so weird not seeing who's talking it's to me. It's so but, strange. <laughs> um, yes, I did attend all three. Um, the experience was great. It, it's, it's cool because it was like the first one. And honestly, the team has been amazing at like getting constant feedback from us um, and just trying to sort of shape each convening based on sort of what worked or didn't work in the first one. Like it, it's sort of always evolved with each one. And that's kind of been amazing to see. And it just goes to show how much they care and how much they love us. <laughs> but so that that was really cool. I mean, it was the first time around, too. So I think that's like, like, very specific to, you know, our first time doing this. Um, but it was it was amazing. It's also like, I mean, you're getting closer and closer to your cohort, like with each convening um, as like the ice breaks. And, you know, the more we see each other, some of some of us live in the same city. So we sort of you know, by the time we got to like London, which was the second convening, we like hung out a bit more in New York or in LA or whatever. Um, so it was it was really great. Um, and like my favorite thing about it, to be honest, was just getting to like bond with everyone and sort of like debrief what's been going on. And um, that that was like the really the best part about it. The programming was obviously amazing. Being flown to London and LA was amazing. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just felt really cared for, to be honest. I don't know if that's specific enough of a response, but. Yeah, thank you, Farida. I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, so there's another question here, which would we accept applications from producer directors? If you identify as a producer director, you can definitely apply, but this program does not support producers. Um, so what we would want to see from you is to apply as a director. Um, you can certainly self-identify as a producer director, but we don't have any programming around producing. It's really focused on directors and screenwriters. And we have documentary treatments to submit as well. Um, we don't accept documentary treatments, unfortunately. Uh, so it would have to be either a short or a feature. So we need to tap in and start off oh, and something. Say again. Hey, do you want me to tap in and ask the question? Yes, please. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. Um, how many applicants will be chosen in the U.S. versus the U.K.? I'm having trouble hearing you, Aya. Okay. How many applications will be chosen between the U.S. versus the U.K.? Ah, so we don't actually have a set number. Um, we, if we have ten really strong people from one place or another, um, we won't actually necessarily divide it up percentage wise. Last year, we had three finalists from the UK and seven from the US that became part of our cohort. That could be a little more, or a little less this year. That being said, there will at least be one or two people from the UK minimum. And then if there's more, we'll definitely have more. So we don't have a set number of people. Are Muslim LGBTQ stories considered? Yes, Muslim LGBTQ stories are definitely considered, um, and we certainly encourage folks to apply from all walks of life. We are very much a, a big tent organization, meaning that if you say you're Muslim, we believe you, you're part of our community. We don't have any uh, restrictions on whether you, know, you are practicing at all or practicing a certain denomination. We have people from all across, both on our team and within the fellowship, whether it, one side is I'm culturally Muslim and one side is I'm very, very religiously Muslim. We have people from all across the spectrum at pillars and within the fellowship. And beyond that, we also certainly accept and encourage the most marginalized of us, which includes LGBTQ folks to apply. 
Do both writing samples need to be very similar in tone? Do both writing samples need to be similar in tone? Absolutely not. If you're someone who's like, I do sci-fi and I do comedy, show us that. You can totally show us your range. I think what we want to see is your distinct voice. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to be the same tone, but we want to understand your perspective and the type of storyteller you are. Is there any help or additional support for neurodi neurodivergent or disabled directors? Yes, absolutely. So super appreciate this question. One, if you are someone who is neurodivergent or additionally someone who identifies as somebody who has a disability, we can certainly talk with you and please use the fact to do this and reach out to us. Um, we can certainly support you with the different uh, type of application and an extended application time and window as well. So you can certainly reach out to us about that. And we also in your intake survey will certainly be asking about accessibility needs, etc, so that we can ensure that we are supporting you as well as possible. We did have a neurodivergent director in our first class. Um, and so I, I wish he was here to tell you more about the experience. But that's certainly something that will be as supportive as possible and are always welcoming feedback on how we can be better there. I'm going to answer one. I'm having a little trouble hearing it, so I'm going to answer one. Yeah, I think so. um, can an original podcast pilot script be submitted as secondary sample? Uh, we do require that they're film and television scripts, so um, maybe you could adapt it into a, into a, a pilot script for TV. Um, can your entertainment industry experience be from a while back? This person took a long break and is now leaning back in. Yeah, absolutely. It can be from a while back. You are totally welcome to lean back in. Um, does being awarded a screenwriting scholarship count as a screenwriting award? Absolutely. Like I said, uh, those are really just guides to show the type of person who's most likely to be in the right place in their career. Does entertainment include writing for podcasts and commercials? Yes. If you're someone who has written for podcasts and commercials in the past and you want to make a, a pivot to film and you have those two samples for TV and film, you're super welcome to apply. Study that how did the program advance you as an artist? Uh, wait, how did it what as an artist? Sorry. Advance you advance advance me. Um it's it's interesting to look back at it now because it, it, I mean the program happened over almost a year so it's like thinking back about how I personally evolved over a year um, I think it's like the same way with a lot of stuff in this industry it's kind of hard to measure and it's like a always a cumulative process that you sort of only feel the impact of like way down the line but I think for me the thing that like really made the most difference was um, really building a community of, you know, I, 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 I went to film school, so I had a community of like filmmakers and artists that I, that I knew, but it's kind of different for me having like a community of Muslim writers, directors, artists who kind of have the same preoccupations and are sort of, um, I guess, struggling with the same ideas and, you know, um, not, not in the sense that we're necessarily all writing about being Muslim in like an explicit way, but just sort of like, um, I guess thinking about a lot of the same things and our values and the way that our values play into what we do. So having that sort of support network and community was a huge part um, of it. So it's just like just being able to like, again, as we're going through, um, you know, our careers in general, being able to access that, that was a huge thing that like, again, it's like hard to measure like in a sort of success failure kind of way but like that was a big win for me um my mentors were super great um you know I think yeah again I think it was a lot of it was was the community thing a lot of it was building confidence I think the um the showcase that we did at the end was probably the first time I got to like really present myself in this way to a room um where I was just like I guess forced to pare down like who I am and what I do in like five minutes uh, or th was it three minutes? I don't even three. know, three yeah. minutes. So I mean, that was a great exercise because it's like essentially that's what you do when you're doing generals with people. Um, and usually I just 
talk a lot like randomly um and so i think like getting that sort of confidence boost get confidence boost trying to like getting to yeah figure out how to present yourself to people in a in a safe environment where like we're kind of all going through it together that was really valuable um yeah it's 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 more <laughs> i i think it's more sort of intangible stuff again um that that i feel that i feel was like a big thing because again it's not a pro that's not a program that's oriented towards like delivering a specific project or or thing um but i yeah so i don't know if that was a good answer maybe it was a shitty answer but <laughs> um yeah <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Farida. I don't think that was a bad answer at all. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so there, there's another question here of being raised in a different faith tradition, but also practicing Islam and solidarity. Are you still eligible to apply? Um, if you are someone who says, I identify as Muslim, I am a Muslim person, you are eligible to apply. If you're not someone who says, I'm a Muslim person, then you're not eligible to apply. That's sort of, it, it's up to you. I don't know how you identify currently, um, but if you're someone who, is, who says, I am Muslim, that's the eligibility criteria. But if you're raised in a different faith tradition, that's totally cool. We love converts. Um, how many pages of the sample scripts will be read? So we have multiple rounds. And because we get thousands in the first round, we don't read the entire script until later rounds. Um, but in the first round, we read the first 10 pages of the script. So it's, it's a really good question because what that means, and this is pretty typical across the board for programs like this, what that means is you really want to make sure your first five to 10 pages grab the audience, that they're really, really strong and that you're getting right into story because that's what allows you to move to the next round. So I would highly recommend, especially focus on focusing on those first five to 10 pages. Is it possible to see some examples of pitch videos that were chosen for the fellowship? So we don't actually do pitch videos in the application. Um, we do personal video essays. They're not pitch videos. Um, the personal video essays are really to tell yourself, tell us about yourself as a person. Um, and what I'll say is there are many ways to approach that. We had some people who did directly, I think Farida, yours was like straight to camera and you just talked about yourself um, and was pretty simple. And we had other people that got into the fellowship that did like super cuts of, of the types of images they're excited about and just had voiceover over it. Both of those are totally fine. It doesn't, we don't privilege one over the other. We also have people that are in our fellowship that are like really introverted and not necessarily like super comfortable speaking to camera and just, you know, had images and just their voice. But we do wanna hear your voice and we wanna hear about you. It gives us a sense of who you are, your personality, how you might fit into an overall cohort, et cetera. So we, we can't show you the pitch videos because it's a little bit um, vulnerable, I think, for our previous fellows to, to show those and put them up. However, we do have some videos that are already available that have cuts from their pitch videos in them. So there are some videos available on our Instagram that uh, I think it's like our Meet the Fellows video where actually the interviews that you see between the images of their films are them talking and it's a lot of them are from their, um, their submission personal video essay. So um, we can't show those to you just because it's, it's a trust thing. But again, it can be really anything you want it to be does not have to be fancy it can literally be like what I'm doing right now. Or if you want to get fancy with it, and that's how you express yourself. That's cool, too. We just want to know who you are. Um, Someone asked, do we only want joyful scripts or can they uh, send the script that's a little bit darker in tone? Great question. You can definitely send scripts that are darker in tone. Um, so we we have folks across the board in our fellowship who have, uh, you know, really, really funny, lighthearted things. We have really, really funny, dark things. I actually think Farida is one of our people that does funny, dark things. Um, and then we have folks that have really dramatic kind of tougher content. Um, and I think as long as it's from a place of understanding the whole person, not sort of that like trauma dumping, very boxed in version of the only thing that's a Muslim issue is domestic terror and being oppressed as a woman. Like that's, that's the stuff we're tired of seeing, but there are other things to explore that show like the richness and fullness while still maintaining a dark tone. So we're certainly willing to accept those. We have many people like that. 
Do pitch decks um, or show Bibles count as primary or secondary samples? So do show Bibles count as primary or secondary samples? They do not. Um, we need to see an either completed directed piece or a completed written piece. We have another question for um, Farida, actually, if you're available. Farida went to grab her charger really quickly. Um, but uh, we can move on to a different question. Sorry, one second. I was just grabbing. Oh, all good, all good. Um, um, yep. Oh, you're back. Yeah. So um, one question is, what do you think set apart your application from the rest? And what do you think made it stand out? What were your strengths? I mean, you guys can tell me. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I applied as a writer director. Um, so I submitted a short, um, a short film that I had made a couple of years ago. Um, it, I mean, it's screened at a few festivals. Um, so I guess it was a short that did fairly well um and a feature sample um that i think was also just starting to sort of like be put out there um yeah i mean i, I can tell you about like what what kind of stuff i make i don't know <laughs> what uh made me special per se <laughs> but um um yeah so one of them was like a sort of a coming of age story it was i know someone mentioned something also about like you know, work being set outside of the US, like both samples I submitted were, were set outside of the US. They were both set in Egypt. So my short was a coming of age film set in Egypt. Um, and my feature script was um, a sort of like also later in life coming of age dramedy um, set in Egypt. So yeah, I mean, I think it's just like about being like yourself as cheesy as that sounds and just like, like kind of doing your thing and being clear on like the kind of things that you want to do um, that make you different or the kind of stuff that you only you can really make because of your specific point of view. Um, so I think that's really all you can do and then hope that that makes you special enough. <laughs> like, I mean, it probably is special because um, only you can do it. So anyway. Thanks, Betty. I will also just say that she's being really humble. There are a lot of things that make that are really special. I would say what came out very clearly was she had a very, very clear and strong visual language as a director that I felt like had her fingerprints all over it. I felt like I could see a, a film and be like, that's a Farida film. And then when it turns, when it turns into the writing piece, she was very, very character driven and had extremely like evolved three dimensional characters that were uh, very like nuanced and had a really clear emotional arc and journey. Um, and then also, honestly, like part of it is that it was really clear Farida was excited about the cohort learning model and would be an engaged cohort member that could both receive from other fellows and also teach other fellows. And that's something that we're looking for as well. So that's certainly what I think set her apart. Um, how ethnically diverse are we aiming for the next cohort to be as ethnically diverse as possible. Um, so I think you probably saw in our fact that we're particularly encouraging folks that we had, frankly, this is on us, a smaller amount of applications for last year. So we particularly want to be reaching out to um, Indigenous Muslims, Latinx Muslims, Black Muslims, um, LGBTQ Muslims. Um, we want uh, to disabled Muslims to feel welcome to apply undocumented Muslims, etc. So we want it to be as diverse as possible because we want it to be representative of our communities. Um, and that's that's an area that we want to really um, support and and sort of commit to this year. So thank you for that question. Aya, do you have other questions? I have another question for Farida. Farida, what was the most memorable moment of the program for you? And how was it working in the industry where we were so, we were, we so very rarely get to work with other Muslim artists? Um, wait, just to clarify the second question, is it like how, how, what's it like being a Muslim in the industry essentially? Or how is it working in the industry where we so really get to work with other Muslim artists? Yeah, I think so. I think okay. so. Okay. Okay. Um, well, okay. The first part, um, most memorable moment of the program. I mean, I don't know if 
this is because it just happened. <laughs> but I think just like getting to spend time together. Um, I think even like the in the last um, in the last session we were in LA, we did the the showcase and um, just having like everyone in the cohort like sit next to each other, watching everyone like watching each other pitch and just like supporting everyone and like clapping and yelling. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I mean it was like a sentimental moment, but I think like it was just like really wholesome seeing how far we've all come in like our relationship with each other and like how invested we are in each other's careers and kind of you know um the the evolution of the group chat and just like us like I guess you know figuring stuff out together like whether it's like small stuff of like how do I put together this like this email how do I fire my agent or how do I um you know like deal with like a you know a specific like how does my pitch deck look that I'm about to send someone? So just like having like that relationship, like seeing how far those relationships have come and, and that like everyone's really there for each other was I think really wholesome. Um, and then obviously, I mean, it's just like hard cause we've, we've, we've been through so many, like there's been so many cool experiences we've had together. We went to Universal Studios <laughs> together then, which was amazing. Um, just a lot of like good moments over food. Um, I think just those moments have have really been great. Um, all the community stuff. I mean, there have been like the like moments that have been great on an individual level, like one on one with our like mentors and stuff. But yeah, that's sort of anyway, different. Um, but okay, uh, how is it working in the industry? Um, I mean, it's interesting because like my first writers' room was had more Muslims in it than is typical in. Hollywood in general, I wrote on the Rami. Um, so that was definitely not like, that's a unique experience and not usually sort of the intro you get into the industry. Um, so, I mean, that was that was pretty, I mean, last year when we were shooting, like people would take breaks to pray on set, which is like definitely not typical of a Hollywood set. So, um, you know, I, I can't speak to, you know, the industry in general I I you know I have started making film my own films and things before that so I've encountered the I guess the industry in different ways but mostly it was like through film festivals and like the more indie side of things like writing on Rami was the first time I got to encounter like I guess the more um like like tv and you know Hollywood I guess in a in a more explicit way um so uh, I don't know I mean it's a, a lot of the typical stuff I guess like when you're talking to industry people like whether through generals or like whatever like reps and things like that it's, you know having to explain yourself a lot um but again like I think something like this is really what like can empower us to just like just do our thing regardless and not like pause to try and explain our whole existence and and you know feel shame and and doing what we actually want to do or trying to tailor our existence to like the market or whatever so I think like you know, there's always going to be that, but as long as, like, I think we're building something, like, an alternative sort of thing that um, balances that out, I think we can make cool shit. <laughs> Thank you, Farida. Um, there's a, a couple questions about samples here um, that someone is saying, if I apply with a film I directed and wrote, do I need to submit two more samples? If you, if you apply with a film you both directed and wrote, that's one sample. Your second sample can be something you either both directed and wrote or just wrote or just directed, but that will only be one sample. So it should be separate pieces of content. Um, do we accept show reels or do they need to be full samples? They need to be full samples. Um, if your scripts are primarily theater plays, um, I would make, I would adapt them, at least one of them for TV, and then we will accept a play as your secondary sample, but one of them should show that you have um, a sense of how to write scripts, um, because again, this is not something that we're, we're going to be kind of diving into what it looks like to use a script sort of format or use script software, et cetera. Um, for TV and, and film. So if it's a primarily theater play, your primary sample should be adapted at minimum into a, into a script for either a pilot or film. Um, your second sample can be playwriting, that's fine. 
Um, acting experience does count towards entertainment experience. Yes. For the director route, can the second work sample be a short film script as opposed to a feature or pilot? No, your second work sample cannot be a short film script as opposed to a feature or pilot. We need to see a script that is either a length of a pilot or feature. Um, okay, another question for Farida. What was the most memorable moment of the program for you? Wait, did I already talk about that one? Yes, I did. Okay, now another question. How do you feel your experience with Pillars influenced your career in the last year? What are lessons or takeaways that have stayed with you? Um, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's tricky because in this career, again, like I feel like thing, you don't see like the impact of things right away. It's things are very slow like you'll meet a person you know one year and then four years down the line you know they call you up and they're like oh I got a job for you or whatever so things like take time in this industry in that way um so I think I'll be able to better answer that question maybe a couple of years down the line um it's also been a weird time in the industry I don't know if you guys are following all the stuff with the writer's strike that's coming up and all that so it's been it's been an interesting time um but uh, I think, again, like creatively, um, it, it's I, I have had more creative support over the past year. But over the past year, I've done other programs in addition to the Pillars program. So I think like all of these things coming together have really um, like been like a, a boost for me creatively. I've been pushing my future forward, um, you know, with the help of some of my mentors and my peers. And um, again, some of those other programs I've been doing at the same time. Um, honestly, the financial support also <laughs> was huge for me, because um, again, it's like when you are working a freelance career, it's tough, and sometimes it's really hard for you to focus on doing anything creative if you're in panic mode and you're like, shit, how am I going to pay the bills? I haven't gotten a job in a couple months or however long. Um, I don't know when it's coming. So, you know, it's that is honestly a big part of it. And there are very few programs out there who will, that will give you like unrestricted funds for you to sort of use to support yourself or put into film or whatever that you need. So that was, that was big. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's all, it's always like incremental stuff that happens over time. So um, in the grand scheme of things, I, I know it's like, this was a, a big thing, but again, like it's sort of hard to, to measure while you're in it. Um, and then was that the whole question or was there? Yeah, any like takeaways that you have that have stayed with you? Oh, the um, honestly, I think just like the theme of like integrity. And I think it's like, it's sometimes hard in this industry. I feel like there are lots of pressures to sort of like bend in different ways and sort of um, compromise on values you might have. Um, and I think like the the big the biggest takeaway or the thing that was really inspiring about this is like I feel like every conversation we had every with every filmmaker who was invited to speak or with our mentors, there was just like a big theme of like how do we fight to keep our integrity in an industry that is very driven by capitalism, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but like, yeah, it's just hard. And it's just like you get like you know, this industry, you're usually thrown into it, it's like no one really explains anything to you. And it's very hard to sort of feel empowered, especially early on in your career. And I think, um, yeah, I think finding each other in this and sort of reminding each other of what's important about what we do. Um, that's a really big part of it, because it's really easy to get lost in all the logistics and all the whatever. Thank you. Um, so somebody asked, would, would I suggest that primary sample centers themes around Muslim identities, or is it okay to just to have a Muslim character, but the story is something not related to identity? Thank you for asking this question. I don't even care if your thing has a Muslim character at all. I want to be really clear about that. We don't box in our fellows. Most of our fellows do have stories that include Muslim characters. We think that's amazing, but actually I would say the vast majority of our fellows, if not all of them, when they submitted, their, their, their scripts were not about Muslim identity. They were much fresher than that. We have a lot of stories about 
what it means to wrestle with identity and struggle with faith, faith etc and that can be really great but it's it's been done so many times that it's harder to have a fresh take on that a lot of the things that we accepted were the latter things that had maybe some Muslim again similar to one of our pillars fellowship advisors Nita Mansour who is actually Farida's mentor and uh, she has a new movie coming out called Polite Society that is two about two young Muslim sisters but they it's not about them being Muslim at all it's about one of them wanting to be to grow up to be a stunt woman and it's this incredible action film about the love of sisterhood and it doesn't really have anything to do with them struggling with their identity it's much more just it's like, we just are Muslim and here's us doing stuff while we're Muslim. And that's much more interesting to us. So thank you for asking that question. Um, are the same two, are there the same two judges for both rounds? Um, and do the samples get read in the first round or second once an applicant is on the long list? The first pages will be read before the long list. Um, that being said, we actually, we do have the same group of judges but in every round, we switch who sees it so that you're seen by basically by the end of it. Once you get to be a finalist, you've been seen by like 10 different people, including Riz. Um, so we ensure that there is three types of people that look at every round. Um, it's a pillar staff member. It's somebody from Riz's team or Riz himself. And it's somebody who is a um, sort of... Um, professional reader that we've sourced from places like Sundance, et cetera, that have familiarity with that. Um, also this year, we're introducing a different group of readers, which we're really excited about, which is fellow alumni that are excited to become readers. So you're gonna be read by, by multiple different types of people with different perspectives. And as you move into the later rounds, you typically somebody won't read you twice until you get to the last round. And then everybody who's a finalist is read before we select the final 10 by everyone. If you have a documentary that is still in production, would this be okay to send in as a secondary source? If you can send the full documentary, yes, because we'll want to see the narrative arc. But if it's just a sample of it, that won't work. We want to be able to track the development of your subjects throughout the course and the narrative um, sort of shape across the course of the entire film. What can we do ahead of time to prepare for the application? Yeah, so one thing you can do ahead of time is start to prepare your resume already. You can also select your, um, your different portfolio pieces that you wanna submit already. You can write your bio and have that prepared. And you can also start, you can also make your personal video essay because you already have all the information available in that fact and what I just shared um, to make that five minute or less video that describes your answers to the three questions that we asked for the personal video essay. So you could do all of that now if you wanted to. If you co-wrote a pilot, is that still a bit valid as a second work sample? It could be a secondary work sample, but it can't be your primary work sample. Because this supports individuals, we need to see your individual work, something that you yourself wrote for the primary sample. And to be totally honest, it benefits you to have that for both samples. If you absolutely don't have anything else and want to submit a co-written piece for the second sample, you may, but it's not, it's going to privilege you if you have two samples that you've written yourself. Since I write in English and Urdu, can I submit an Urdu script? Okay, if you write in English and Urdu, can you submit an Urdu script? Um, the readers will not be able to access that because not all of our readers speak Urdu. This is also um, an, a program that is in English, just to be clear. Now, if you want to submit things that are subtitled, that is totally fine. So if you want to have your Urdu script and then have the translation below and just say like, this would be subtitled, that's great. But you do have to translate it to make sure that all of our readers can access it. Well, Farida, you've talked about what you received from the community aspect of the cohort. What do you think you gave back to the cohort? What was your role in the cohort? Also, what was your personal statement video like? My role was the class clown, according to our superlatives at the end. <laughs> um, 
I mean, hopefully I gave back the same thing I was receiving. Uh, I think, no, I think it was like a, yeah, I think it was a two way thing. I think I, I personally like love being in sort of like a, like a workshop environment. I sort of, you know, in college, I was in a lot of acting classes. I, you know, um, but uh, yeah, I think for me, just sort of um, getting to like workshop ideas together. I mean, that was sort of stuff that wasn't necessarily programmed, but stuff we did together anyway. Um, there was always sort of like, again, whenever people needed feedback on anything, that was something we were always, you know, doing for each other. Um, just like, yeah, bouncing off idea again, whether it's like industry related stuff or creative stuff. Um, um, yeah, I think, I mean, that was, I feel like mostly what it was in terms of what I brought to the table. Now I'm feeling insecure. I'm like, did I bring anything to the table? I don't know. <laughs> um, no, I think, yeah, it was, it was a lot of that sort of thing. Um, yeah, was that, oh. What was your personal statement video like? Sorry, my family just is calling me on FaceTime. So I lost the window, I'll, one second. My personal statement video, I don't know. You know what, I was probably um, bitching about <laughs> the expectations <laughs> that uh, um, was, we sort of, that I, you know, people have, of us as Muslim women uh, and like what kind of stories to tell. I think I was <laughs> in a place where I was getting frustrated. I was working um, on a project with some French producers. And I, I mean, if anyone here has gone through like the process of like applying to like grants and like, you know, fun, like public funding for their films or whatever, especially a lot of like Arab scripts at least end up being financed mostly by European like funds. Um, and so you're constantly having to sort of, again, like explain to them who you are and what, um, yeah, and try and fit into the box, like a box of expectations that they have for you. So anyway, uh, it was probably a little bit of my frustration with that. And also just the excitement of like having, like there just are no spaces like this one, like period. Um, so I think like just being excited about having a space like this where, again, like when you, like you baseline have like this, big thing that is that you have in common with a group of people um and again you don't like you don't have to talk about it anymore when everyone in the room sort of gets it and you can sort of move past like some of the identity stuff and be like okay cool we all understand that like this is a part of who we are how do we move past that and sort of um just tell the stories we want to tell like just things that we find fascinating and and funny and cool as individuals so yeah like um that was probably a lot of what I talked about. I can't remember exactly. Um, it's been a minute <laughs> since I've thought about it. Um, but I think that was what I talked about. So yeah. And just stories I was excited to tell in general, which I think, I think I maybe referenced like some of my favorite like films and shows and things I'm inspired by as well. Um, so yeah. Awesome, thank you. Um, so someone is asking, I, I saw a couple questions about this and I just wanna make sure I'm super clear. People have asked if my script has not been filmed yet, can I still submit it? Your script does not have to be in development. It doesn't have to be somebody's making it. It can be just, I wrote this and I'm excited about it and I'm proud of this script. It does not have to have any even aspirations of you <laughs> necessarily making it. Um, it's just to show us who you are as a story storytellers so just want to be extra clear about that your script does not have to be something that is being made if you're someone who just wrote a script that you're really proud of that's enough it doesn't have to have been created or directed already Okay, if my sample one is a short doc and my sample two is a narrative script, is that okay? 100% okay. Yes, that's totally okay. Um, another question for Farida. Can you talk about your experience with your three mentors? Was there a particular mentor or type of mentor that was most helpful? 
um it was great I think your experience with with the mentors is really kind of what you make of it and sort of also depends a lot on like where you're at with your career what you need more support with like there are certain points where you know you're working on something specifically like a, a script or something and you need more creative support um on something so you know with my creative creative mentor getting some like specific feed or not even just the creative mentor I think all three of my mentors actually read my material and give me feedback on them so it was cool getting like different perspectives like you know one of them was like an exec at a24 one of them was um you know a film two of them were filmmakers writer directors and one of them was an exec so you know it was cool getting feedback like on my writing from all three of them three different perspectives um sometimes it was honestly just like more specific industry stuff that i didn't know how to navigate on my own like again like i'm like unhappy with my reps for example like how do i navigate the scenario you know from someone who has had to do it before or you know someone who like getting an a, a perspective on also what i what i should expect from my own reps again like my my first reps that i got like you kind of you get thrown into this like you're not really sure it's hard to tell like what your expectations are supposed to be because like people don't really tell you and you have no frame of reference and so like asking like different types of people about their take on the same thing is sort of like to me the most valuable thing because an executive's perspective is going to be different from a filmmaker's so you know getting to compare and contrast it's all for me honestly it's all about getting like different like a bigger sample size of like how do things play out in this industry because there really is no like path or one way that anything plays out it's completely arbitrary and different for everyone so like getting as many takes on like the same thing is to me what was the most valuable um so that was big so yeah it was like a mix of like creative feedback um on like my work and also just like troubleshooting like random things like how do i like send this email like should i you know, uh, even just things like, oh, am I like, where am I at in my career actually? Like, is this normal? I think a lot of questions were just like, is this normal? Or am I like, is something wrong with me? Um, so I think <laughs> some of it is that. And I think it's just like, again, like the more you expand your network, especially like around with people that you feel safe around. And I think that's like, again, like what Pillars did really well. Um, because you're not going to feel safe around everyone that you meet in this industry. So I think for me, that was the big thing. And I think for me, I also learned like how to filter, like what kind of connections and what kind of people I, I want around me in this industry and just being a lot more um, just like clear and um, just clear about that. I, yeah. And Nadra, for example, one of the people in my cohort was like someone who really helped me with that because she's very clear on like, you know, her needs and expectations about things. So like, you know, there are ways in which we sort of support each other like that. Through it. Thanks, Farida. Um, so somebody asked, is it possible to share a few examples of who the mentors are? I shared a little bit about this before, but to double click on it, um, for creative mentors, this is someone who could be Muslim, but isn't necessarily Muslim. Um, so, for example, Farida, do you want to talk about who your creative mentor was? Um, yeah, mine was Desiree Akhavan. Um, so she made misappropriation of Pam and Post and a bunch of great stuff. She all, It was cool because we also both went to NYU, so we had that in common. And we spent a lot of time just like talking about the program, talking shit. Um, but I love the program. But anyway, um, so she was really great. She was like, gave me a lot of very specific, you know, feedback on my script and that sort of thing. We are still in touch. Um, Nida Manzur was my one of my other mentors who I'm obsessed with. She's amazing. Um, it's also great because like, honestly, you guys did a great job matching us because again, like both of them are like people who do things that are very similar to the kinds of things I want to be doing. So we really like just vibed <laughs> on like the kind of stories we want to tell uh, and the kind of things that excite us. Um, and then I had um, an exec, a TV exec from A24, who's also really great. She was also like younger and like, you know, it's, it's, um, yeah, I got like, and again, like, you know, pretty much all of them were like, you know, I have, we're, we have a text relationship and, you know, like we're, when things come up, um, you know, there was a certain point where I was like, 
felt like I was like had to make a really difficult decision about like a like a work thing and at some point like I texted Nida about it and she's like okay let's get on the phone let's figure it out so it's like um that that sort of thing was was really amazing thanks yeah. Nida yeah so some of the other mentors um for creative mentors we had people like Gloria Calderon Kellett we had people like Graham Yost we had people like Bradford Young we have people like Jessica Scharzer who created American Horror Story we had uh, people like Shannon Dill. So it was a very, very, um, it's totally dependent on what fellows want to work at. So like Farida alluded to, we didn't actually secure the mentors until after we got their questionnaires so that we could match them to the person that we thought would be most helpful to them. Um, like Farida shared, uh, for the folks that are more in the vein of the industry mentor, it's people from A24, Disney, Netflix, and Amazon primarily. And then I think we had one from Warner Brothers. Um, and so again, we match that with the type of person that we're like, oh, this is the type of person who would be most like the, the network that would be most likely to like buy from this person, right? So that you can start that relationship. And then for the advisor mentors, like I shared, it's folks that are our advisors. So people like Nida Mansour, Sana Amanat, who created Miss Marvel, the Sam Tariq, who's producing on Blade and did a uh, did um, Riz Ahmed's film Mogul Mowgli, it directed that. Um, it's folks like, um, it's folks like Mahershala Ali. So we, it's, it's folks from the advisor community. Um, if the application gets accepted, do you continue to work and focus on the same script or work on different ideas? And do F1 students studying in the US qualify to apply? So the first is, if you're a student studying in the U.S., yes, you qualify to apply on the like condition that your plan is to stay in the U.S. or U.K. because we're trying to build the bench in these two industries right now. Um, that's where our focus area is. So yes, you're eligible to apply if you have a permanent address. Um, in in terms of the piece around, um, sorry, I just that just went away. What was the first question, Aya? Oh, I see. Do you continue to work and focus on the same script or work on different ideas? So again, I, I'm trying to ex, I'm trying to make sure this feels really clear. This is not a lab. So when you submit your scripts, this is not to say you're workshopping this piece until the end of the fellowship and then you're going to present that piece. This is a fellowship that focuses on you as an artist. So for example, um, there are some people who when they presented at the showcase presented a new idea. Uh, so Zishan, who was our fellow that was part of yesterday's info session, had like three new ideas for documentaries that he didn't even have when he started this fellowship that he pitched at that showcase. Um, so it is not actually about workshopping a specific project or piece of content. It's about developing you as a storyteller and building that community of support around you, regardless of the stories you want to tell. Um. Okay, Farida, what made you apply and what do you feel like you gained from the fellowship? Um, I mean, there aren't a lot of Muslim fellowships out there. <laughs> so I think when that popped up, I was like, okay, I mean, this feels like, yeah, something. I mean, it's just, a, it's such a great program. I think like it's, there have never, there has never been a program like this before. And I think um, the idea that it's actually a program that is, supporting individuals instead of projects like there I've you know I've done a lot of pro like sorry uh, programs where it's sort of more project specific support and these are great um for like a specific thing but I think um just having something that is more focused on each person's like personal development and the development of like a community was like such a unique thing that I was like this is this feels like a no-brainer um so that, yeah, the, and also I, I feel like, again, there, you know, Pillars is an organization that I feel like has the same values that I share and I, that's really important to me. And I, I really appreciate that they're very clear on their values and like, you know, again, I think sometimes like some like Muslim specific opportunities or whatever can really fixate a lot more on some of the identity stuff and and all of that and to me that at some point feels a little suffocating and I just really appreciate that like pillars is very clear on the fact that like we're just supporting anyone who's a Muslim filmmaker whatever stories you want to tell 
and we don't have to sit there and talk about identity like all the time. Um, so I just like that something I really appreciated. Um, so yeah, and what did I gain? Um, I feel like I touched on this at this point, right? Or just- I think so, I think so. Yeah, I feel like I've covered that, that part <laughs> in other answers, so yeah. Um, you guys well, can find me and ask me questions, like more specific questions if there's still anything too. Yeah, so it looks like there's one more question. Um, and the question is, what was the most challenging aspect of the fellowship for you? I don't think it was challenging. <laughs> I, I don't think it's meant to be challenging. I think it was like actually the opposite, I feel. I mean, if anything, I guess the, the, the showcase was in a way like, like but it's like minor challenging. Um, I think it's just the same kind of challenging that you go through, just going through this industry anyway. Um, no, I think it, it honestly felt like a, a safe, comfortable space uh, <laughs> in an industry that is otherwise very challenging. So <laughs> I think it was actually quite the opposite. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't say, I think there's always, of course, like, things that you know when when you're doing something new when you're meeting new people when you're like putting out put, putting yourself out there in, in new ways like all of that can feel challenging but I think it's just you know kind of what we do so yeah awesome thank you Farida yeah um, well with that we have no more open questions you've answered 123 questions <laughs> incredible 20 questions they got nothing on us <laughs> Um, so thank you all so much. Like I said, if you have other questions that come up for you or that we didn't get to answer today, we do have a place where you can submit questions on our website. If you navigate to the Pillars Fund website, at the top, you'll see culture change. If you click that, you'll see frequently asked questions. And you click that and scroll all the way to the bottom after having read the frequently asked questions to make sure that we didn't already answer that question, um, you can submit a question through the link there. Um, and we're so deeply appreciative. We cannot wait to get to know so many of you throughout this application process. And thank you for your interest and support. Um, and also shout out to Farida, she did a great job. Thank you so much for letting us put you on the spot and answering so honestly. Um, we wouldn't be who we are without you. So thank you. No you. No you. No I you. <laughs>